Hello Vinyl Community, this is Tommy in North Carolina and uh, today there was a really big sale at one of my favorite record stores and so I wanted to share with you guys some of my pickups. Uh, before I do that, there's a couple of other things I want to show you. Uh, last night I was out with my wife book shopping and managed to pick up a copy of Neil Young's Special Deluxe which is the latest uh, autobiography. It's a memoir of life in cars. It's the follow-up to the book he did, Waging Heavy Peace. This was in the bargain section, and so I'm a big fan of picking up these hardcover uh, bargain books, and I enjoyed Waging Heavy Peace, so I thought that would be a worthy pickup. And also, today in the mail uh, came a copy of this, uh, which is a record that I've been trying to get for a little while that has not been available because I think they weren't printing them. But this is uh, Sea of Cowards by The Dead Weather, Jack White's uh, band with Alison Mosshart, uh, the second album they did. And so this one, it looks like, is back, and they had a big special sale uh, from InSound, which I believe is is Warner Electric, uh, Warner Electrica, uh, Wea, as, as they're known, but this is on the Third Man label, uh, but like I said, it just came in today, and so they packaged it really well, and uh, everything looks good, so I recommend that. So let's get to the good stuff. So Harvest Records is a local store here in Asheville, North Carolina, and they have an annual sale every year, and of course, I've only been here such a short time. This is the first time I got to part participate in it. But they have uh, all of their used stuff is on sale, all of their uh, new stuff is on sale, just everything on sale. Because I think they take a vacation, they close down the store for a few days, and so this is kind of a big blowout. But they, they put a lot of stuff out in the new arrivals bin. I mean, a lot of really good stuff they've been setting on for a little while, and so they, they finally put it out. And I imagine if I went back right now, I'd probably find some really good stuff. But um, this is one of those days I wish that I had uh, Mick Jagger money just to spend because uh, there's so much that they had and so much good stuff. And the thing I like about Harvest, and I think I've said it in a previous video, one of the things I love about Harvest Records is is they price stuff to sell. They don't they don't just astronomically price stuff to the point that um, that it's you just can't afford it. Uh, you know they they've got stuff that at really good prices and fair prices and 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 I really admire that about them. So if you're ever in Asheville, there's several great record stores in the area, but I highly recommend Harvest. Uh, they're really great guys and they've got a good selection of stuff. So first off, uh, amongst the early people that came in, they had a special poster, and so this is it. Uh, the Harvest Records 13th. This is their 13th uh, anniversary, their 13th year in business. Uh, it's a it looks like it's a limited print. Uh, for, I got number fourteen of thirty. Uh, so this is the poster uh, doing their anniversary sale. So kind of cool. Uh, it's a good thing to get my hands on. So let's get to the good stuff. So down in the basement of Harvest, I didn't even know they had a basement, but apparently they do. They had a huge uh, selection, I mean, tens of thousands of records, $1 a piece, and it was just a hodgepodge. A lot of people there. I probably only really got to about half of it uh, before I was tapped out, but I found some really neat stuff, and so I'll share those guys, share them with you guys right now. These are all $1 records, so we're going to go through them pretty quickly, so just hold on to your hats, and, and we'll, we'll kind of go through them, uh, different stuff. One is the Chirping Crickets. Uh, this was on the Brunswick label, so this is an old one. And it looks pretty toasty. It doesn't look like it's in the best shape. But for a dollar, I thought, you know what? This is a, this is a cool record to have for one dollar. So, so I kind of got this on principle. Jacket's got some got some splits in it and everything, so I might do some a little TLC and bring it back to life. But it's such a great cover and it's a classic album, and you know you just don't see many '50s albums like that. And and like I said, for a dollar, uh, some of the stuff that I got was stuff that I just was kind of remotely interested in and things that I'd not really heard. Uh, so maybe there's some stuff that you guys can comment below and talk about. And uh, but. One of them was this, Tom Rush, uh, the Circle Gang, uh, on the Electra label. I've seen quite a few of these out and about. I, I know the song No Regrets, obviously, uh, but there's there's a few other things. So this was one of those kind of taking a gamble on it kind of records. 
like I said, for a buck. Uh, that's the way some of these are. This is another one. Uh, I am, some of you know, especially my friend Sean in New Orleans. Hi, Sean. Uh, he is uh, a big James Taylor guy. I'm not the biggest James Taylor fan in the world. But this is the first album he did, and, and for a dollar, and it's on the Apple label, uh, which is the Beatles label. So just as a collector of labels, I, I said, eh, I probably should have a copy of this in the collection. I will listen to it. I, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of James Taylor. Uh, I probably don't see myself getting a whole lot more of his stuff. It's just, he's one of those artists that just kind of completely misses me. Um, so, but for a buck, I couldn't go wrong. This is another album I've seen quite a bit. It's a pretty common album. It's still got the shrink around it. This is uh, Dave Edmonds. This is the album. I think it's called uh, D uh, D E Seventh. Uh, Dave Edmonds. Ha ha. Seven. Uh, funny. It's got the chord chart down there on the bottom. But uh, you know, just to give it a shot, I'm, I'm familiar with Dave Edmonds. I know he was playing around a lot of cats in the '80s back in that time. And so, just to check it out, this is one I have no idea anything about. I just liked the cover, and it's on the Stiff label, uh, which was Elvis Costello's label. Uh, it looks like this is about 1980 Stiff Records, a group called Any Trouble. I thought this might be some kind of new new wave type thing, just based on the the cover and the way it looks. For a dollar, I thought I'll give it a shot. Another one I got, it's kind of probably new wavy, uh, is this Phil Seymour album. Phil Seymour, I'm familiar with him because of uh, Dwight Twilley, who I'm a fan of. And so I thought I would give this one a shot. This album's also 1980 on the Boardwalk label. So, like I said, worth a shot for a buck. This is an album that I kind of am really glad that I have or, or found. This is uh, King's Record Shop. Uh, by Roseanne Cash, and one of the reasons I really, this is one of those albums she did in the in the mid '80s. Rodney Crowell produced it, who who she was married to at one point, and so this has her version of uh, Tennessee Flat Top Box, her one of her dad's songs. But uh, you know, the, the I'm a, I enjoy the Roseanne Cash stuff I've heard, and this one's in really good shape. And so again, one dollar you can't go wrong. Uh, this is a kind of a novelty thing. This is the Hearts of Fire soundtrack. The jacket's not in the best shape, but uh, if you've ever seen this, this is a 1987 movie with uh, Bob Dylan and Fiona, and so it's got uh, Bob Dylan doing a couple of songs. The I guess the most famous one is The Usual, which is a John Hyatt song that Bob Dylan did. I don't know that he actually wrote any songs on this album. No, he did, Night After Night. Uh, what do you know? It's a terrible movie. How to Dream About You, Baby. Also a Bob Dylan song. There's only about three Bob Dylan songs, but the, the musicians list is very interesting. Uh, Eric Clapton, uh, Red Beach, who played with Winger, uh, Kip Winger, is on this album. Uh, it's, uh, you know, an interesting collection of people. Uh, like I said, I've seen the movie. It's It's not the best in the world. And it's more about Fiona than it is Bob. But as a fan of Bob, you know, again, one dollar. Here's another one I'm not don't know anything about, but I do like Marshall Crenshaw. Everything that I've heard, uh, uh, and this is an album. It looks like it's from '87. It's called Mary Jean and Nine Others. So um, again, and I enjoy the Marshall Crenshaw stuff I've heard. So that was a good one. This is one that I don't know. I may already have a copy of this, but if I didn't, it was $1. This is The Who's Face Dances, which is the album they did uh, right after um, Keith died. Uh, this was the first uh, post-Keith album that they did with uh, Kenny Jones as their drummer. And it's got uh, You Better You Bet on it, which is a big song. I like a lot of the songs on here. Uh, don't Let Go the Coat, Daily Records, Another Tricky Day, there's a lot of songs on here that I like. The production's a little thick, but uh, it's not it's not a bad album. And I like I like you better, you bet. So here's some stuff I've got quite a. It's like I bought multiples of for these artists, but it's, it's people again I want to check out. Uh, this is one uh, Bruce Coburn, uh, who I've heard a lot of good things about as a songwriter 
And so this is an album. It's called uh, Further Adventures Of. It's a promo copy, funny enough. But um, again, just wanting to check his stuff out. I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy it. I got quite a few of these uh, Bruce Coburn albums. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, uh, you guys comment below and let me know. Because I know it's spelled Cockburn, but I've always heard Coburn is how you pronounce it. Bruce Coburn. Anyway, this is another one I got, Stealing Fire. And I got a third one called Dancing in the Dragon's Jaws. So um, these albums, I have no idea what, what they're about, but, um, but I'm looking forward to hearing them. This is also a promo copy. Uh, another one is The Call. Into the Woods. Uh, this was uh, kind of a Christian rock band from, from the 80s, Michael Bean. But uh, again, uh, the stuff that I've heard, I've really enjoyed. So uh, wanting to get into those. Uh, another Call album I got, uh, Red Moon. So like I said, I have no idea. This was in 1990, so this was a, a, later, a later album. But again thought it was worth checking out. These next two I bought really on principle because they were a dollar. Uh, this is Michael Nesmith in the first national band, uh, Magnetic South. This was the first solo album he did, Post Monkeys. It's a fantastic album, but I'm a huge Nesmith fan. This is still in the in the shrink wrap. It's, it is open, so it's not sealed, but uh, if anything, the jacket's probably better than my copy. Uh, but either way, for one dollar, I said I'm not gonna going to let that sit. And this one as well, which I think I already have two copies of this album, so this is my third. Uh, Michael Nesmith, From a Radio Engine to the Photon Wing. This is the one with Rio on it, which is widely uh, regarded as one of the first music videos. But uh, funny enough, this is an album that Nesmith recorded in Nashville, but it's getting away from kind of the country sound. Uh, Magnetic South is definitely more of, of a country Sounding record, country rock. This is kind of getting away from that a little bit. A little more contemporary. Uh, another one I don't know if I have, but I bought it because it was a buck. Roger McGuinn, Peace on You. Roger McGuinn from the from the Birds. And so I'm a big fan of Roger's. I've, I've seen him and met him. And uh, this is one of those albums he did. One of his first solo albums. I think this is either the second or third one he did. But uh, this has uh, got him doing a little more... Um, Stuff like Gate of Horn and stuff like that. So I have it on CD. I may have it on vinyl. This is a terrible cover, but again for a dollar. Uh, Roger McGuinn and Chris Hillman featuring Gene Clark. So I think the other one, and I do have a copy of, is the uh, is the album uh, McGuinn, Hillman, and Clark, which was the three of them. This one is just uh, just McGuinn, and McGuinn looks hilarious with his little foam. Uh, anyway, looking like a secret agent man, but, uh, but yeah, I, this is probably a terrible album, but, uh, you know, like I said, for a buck, I'm, can't go wrong. And so finally, uh, the stuff that I got that was in the store that was in their new arrival bin, that was the sale stuff, a tw I think it's 20% off, off the, all the U stuff. So there was a great selection of stuff in there and a lot of people, uh, picking over stuff. So these are three albums that I was really, really stoked to find and get. Uh, this is Question Mark and the Mysterians, 96 Tears. Uh, those of you that know me know that I absolutely love the song 96 Tears. It's uh, one of my favorite favorite tracks. And this is one of those albums you don't see in the wild very much on the uh, Cameo label. And so uh, this is a mono pressing. And uh, it's just a, it's just a, uh, a fun album. I checked it out in the store. They have a turntable set up so you can sample the stuff. It's got uh, Stormy Monday and a couple other things. So looking forward to, to getting into this one. Another one which I'm really surprised and excited to get, uh, the Walker Brothers, uh, The Sun Ain't Gonna Shine. Uh, you don't see a lot of Walker Brothers and Scott Walker in the wild. And so this is one that, that was definitely a, a must-have. The price was really good on it. And it's supposed to be a mono copy on the Smash label. Uh, I understand that some of these, some of these Smash records, uh, you can see the mono sign there, are not true mono. They, they just packaged them the, uh, on the cheap. So this may actually be a stereo copy. I don't know. 
Uh, I'll have to do some research and look in the dead wax, which I haven't had time to do. But either way, it's it's always good to find Walker Brother records out in the wild, uh, especially for a good price. This one still has shrink wrap around it uh, with a 50 cent sticker on it, I wish. And finally, and certainly not least, uh, my uh, Harry Nilsson collection is really, really coming along very nicely. This is a stereo copy of uh, Pandemonium uh, Shadow Show, which was the first uh, real kind of solo Nielsen album. This is a uh, later pressing. It's the orange RCA Victor uh, label, but uh, it looks really in good shape. Again, the shrink wrap's still on it. 49 cents, I wish. It looks like it was a cutout, but, uh, but again, one of those that you rarely see out in the wild, uh, especially Nielsen. So, my Nielsen collection, and I may do a video on uh, Harry and, and my Nielsen collection. I've really been lucky in the last six months or so and have been able to find a lot of quality uh, copies of Nielsen stuff, either out in the wild or the few times I bought some on eBay was kind of rolling the dice, but I managed to get some really good stuff. Uh, and so my my Nielsen a year ago, I, I wasn't too proud of, of the Nielsen stuff I had. Now I've only got a few things to, to complete the collection, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that. So um, anyway, that's what I picked up today. I had a really good time and um, didn't overdo it too badly. Um, but um, you know, I, any you know, anytime you you kind of overdo it. But I did find some good stuff, and it's going to keep me busy for quite a little while. And I wanted to share it with you guys. Thanks for everybody that's subscribing and liking uh, the videos. Continue to do so. Spread the word. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, Twitter and Instagram is Tommy Burton 75 and uh, I usually will post on there what I'm spending and everything. And again, thanks to everybody that's been watching and comment below. I try to interact as much as I can and, uh, and respond. So if you have any questions or, or comments, feel free and, and let me know below. And I uh, hope to see you guys again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.